let G be equal to GL2R, set of real two by two matrices, non-zero determinant. So these matrices are invertible. Part one, show that G is a group under matrix multiplication. For this part, we're gonna consider group actions of G. In this case, we want the space X to be the group G itself. Now, recall, for a group action, we're trying to exhibit our group G as a group of symmetries of the space X. So we'll have, for each G in our group, a map pi G that carries X to itself. Then we'll have two conditions. First, pi of a product applied to X is gonna be the same as if we apply pi on each element separately. So it'll respect group multiplication and we'll have that pi on the identity element sends each element x back to itself. Now, in our case with g equal to gl2r, we consider two group actions and we'll see that they're going to correspond to familiar operations in linear algebra. For our first group action, consider multiplication on the left by elements of our group. So if G and P are elements of GL2R, pi of G applied to P is gonna be G times P. If we choose an element P sub B from our group, okay, that'll have columns V1 and V2. The determinant's non-zero. So V1 and V2 are linearly independent, which means V1 and V2 form a basis of R2. Conversely, if I have an order basis for R2, V1, V2, we form the basis matrix. That matrix is gonna have determinant non-zero, so it's gonna be an element in GL2R. So this correspondence between elements of GL2R and ordered bases for R2. Now, if we apply G to P sub B, the effect is just gonna to be to let G act on each column. So we'll get a new basis, GV1, GV2. To see the basis property, note, if we take the determinant of G times P sub B, we use the product rule for the determinant. So that's gonna mean we're taking determinant of G times determinant of P. They're both non-zero, so the product's non-zero, which means determinant of G times P is non-zero. So it's in GL2R, so we have a basis. Now, for this action, we're gonna have two properties. Okay, the action's gonna be faithful, and it's gonna be transitive. Faithful just means if we have an element G, it sends each element X to itself, then G has to be the identity. So this is gonna mean each element of G goes to a unique symmetry of the space X. Then for transitive, well, transitive is just, we can get there from here. So if you give me two matrices, P sub B and P sub C, I can find another element in GL2R. If I multiply on the left, that'll get me from P sub B to P sub C. Okay, in this case, that matrix is gonna be P sub C, P sub B inverse. Before we get to the next group action, let's consider change of basis. So we're gonna have a basis, V1, V2, going to have a vector x and r2. Since I have a basis, I can rewrite x as a linear combination of v1 and v2. With this linear combination, we could peel off the coefficients. It's going to give me my coordinate vector for x with respect to b. So I'll have the vector a, b. Now, if I want to go in the other direction, if I have a coordinate vector, well, the coefficients are already here, so I just match them with V1 and V2. If I set up the matrix PB equal to V1, V2, so this is our basis matrix, I get X by taking P sub B, multiplying it by the coordinate vector X sub B. That rebuilds this linear combination here. So what am I doing with P sub B? This carries us from coordinates in our basis B to the standard coordinate system. So here I have E1 and E2. EI is just gonna have a one in the i coordinate, 
and then zeros everywhere else. So P sub B is just going to carry X sub B to X to go from coordinates in B to coordinates in another basis C. I'm just going to apply the change of basis matrix from basis B to basis C. To get a formula for that matrix, let's take a vector X and write it in two ways. So I can write it as P sub B, X sub B, and P sub C, X sub C. If we move the P sub C to the other side with an inverse, we're going to get our change of basis matrix. So note this is going to carry coordinates in B to coordinates in C. If we just consider what the matrices are doing, P sub B carries coordinates in B to coordinates in the standard basis. And then P sub C inverse carries coordinates in the standard basis to coordinates in C. So when we multiply, we're going to carry coordinates in B to coordinates in C by way of the standard basis. Now, the notation is nice. Okay, if we apply our change of basis matrix to coordinates in B, okay, well, this reads off the B, sends it to C like we would want. If we do a composition of change of bases, so it's just going to be multiplying matrices together, if I go from A to B to C, that should be the same as going from straight A to C. You can check that that's going to work out, okay, using your definition. And then you note the notation is just take the terms on the inside and cancel them out. If we want another group action where the space is the group itself, we consider conjugation. So here, if I take an element G in the group, pi G on A, it's going to be G A, G inverse. Here, we're going to start with change of basis and we'll see how conjugation falls out. Now, I take a linear transformation T from R2 to R2, we'll have our bases B and C from before. I can take my linear transformation to coordinates. In that case, I can represent it as multiplication by a matrix. That matrix is going to depend on the basis that we're using. Now, if we want to go from the answer in each basis, Back to the standard basis, we just multiply each by P sub B and P sub C. Those are going to be equal. So I can move the P sub C up to here with an inverse. And then you'll note that's equal to the change of basis matrix from basis B to basis C. Then I'm going to replace X sub B with the change of basis matrix from basis C to basis B times X sub C. Now, we can remove the X sub C's, and I'll replace our change of basis matrix here with the change of basis matrix from B to C inverse. So you can check that that holds. Now, that gives me this formula here. Let's take a closer look at that last equation. If we change from basis B to basis C, A sub C is going to be given by taking A sub B, then we conjugate by the change of basis matrix. So here we see the second group action come in. Now, what happens if we just conjugate with any G from our group? What's the change of basis? We know we're starting with basis B, so we want to figure out the target basis C. So we set up or change of basis matrix going from B to C. That's equal to P sub C inverse times P sub B. Then I just isolate P sub C. So we'll get P sub B times G inverse. Then to get our basis C, we just take the columns from that matrix. Now, it's worth noting, okay, with the group action property, okay, that we can do things stepwise if we have a product. That's just going to turn into if I have a composition of change of bases. So if we go from B to C and then from C to D, it's going to be the same as going directly from B to D. With our second group action, we can consider conjugacy classes for elements in our group. 
start with a linear transformation t from r2 to r2. We'll assume it's invertible. That way, our A matrices are always in our group. If we choose the standard basis, we'll call the corresponding matrix A. Now, the consciousy class of A, on the group level, that's defined as all products, G, A, G inverse, where G ranges over all elements in our group. If I think in terms of bases, we have all matrices A sub B, where B ranges over all bases for R2. Now, this is going to tie in to something that we're familiar with. So if we have a linear transformation T that can be put in a diagonal form, what we do is we consider all bases for R2. Okay, we go through them one by one until we find a basis that returns an A sub B that's diagonal. So that's what we're doing when we change basis to get diagonal form. Now, if we do it the way I just stated, it's horribly inefficient and probably an impossible project. So we have a recipe that gets us right to that basis. Okay, that's going to be to look for a basis of eigenvectors. Now, in general, okay, we're not going to be able to put every matrix in diagonal form. So for example, if I consider this matrix here, we have no real eigenvalues. So there's nothing to put on your diagonal if you went to diagonal form. This matrix here, we have all real eigenvalues, but there's not going to be an eigenvector basis. So the idea here is you're going to get an eigenvalue of 2 with multiplicity 2, but only one dimension of eigenvectors. So this is the game we play in advanced linear algebra. Okay, If you can't diagonalize a matrix, then what are going to be the best representatives for your conjugacy class for the matrix that you're given.